Welcome to Knit the Books, a podcast by yarn and book enthusiasts for yarn and book enthusiasts. I'm Allie. I'm Vicki. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us. We've had, um, it's cool here today. We've had warm weather. It's like 80 yesterday and it's, I think it's like 40 something today. It held cold. last night. I heard. Missy jumped out of the bed and came downstairs with Scott. <laughs> yeah. She so was scared it woke to me death. Up. It woke me up a couple of times. So, have you been knitting any? I have, actually. During our crazy um, weather? I have. I finished two or three things. Well, I'm glad someone finished something, because I sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have done... Here's my February hat for kiddo with the, the, the pattern, the love theme. It's a pattern. If you want to hold it, I will get the name of okay. the pattern. Because the pattern had the, the name in it. And I still haven't done mine. and it, It's like, what, the 25th? Gosh. Yes, and yes. I've had a crazy work month, is all I will say, so that's my excuse. It will get done, though. Maybe tomorrow. Be Loving is the name pattern of that little hat. Very cute. And what's the yarn? It is a Karen Simply Soft, or, mm -hmm. but I don't remember what the colorway is. Sure. That's the wrong hat. That's the rolled brim hat. Here's the oh. Be Loving hat. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. So, I did two. I enjoyed knitting this one so much. That I wanted to do another one real quick. So those little roll brims knit up so quick. Mm -hmm. So that's my hats. And you don't finish yeah. nothing else? I haven't finished anything. You haven't finished anything? I've barely knit. <laughs> okay. Finish my pretty cow me. That it's, is lovely. It is lovely. It's a pattern by Miss Allie here. And the yarn is Barrett Wool Company. It's their fingering weight. And the colorway is red flannel. And I just love it. It's the perfect red for you. I told you it would be. You did? You told me it would be. Um, uh, it it looks good with your hair. It look, <laughs> thanks to Katie. The ends are weaved in. It's just not been blocked yet. But I'm going to throw it around. Yeah. I mean, I think it looks fine, personally. Not blocked. So. Not blocked. Yeah, I think it looks good, too. So I think you're fine. Okay. But all that's right. all I have finished. Are you working on anything? I've worked on a couple of things. So, I'm still working on my Reindeer Game sock. I'm doing the Vanilla Bean Stripe Socks, which is where you, at every color change, you slip a stitch. If you guys don't have one of these, and... They're there, awesome. These are wonderful. I know Daniela Caffeinated Gert showed off hers in one of her recent Caffeinated Crafting episodes. Could you hold that for I me, will. please? Thank you. So, here's my sock. I am almost ready for the heel like I think I'm like maybe an inch I know the next color is green and I can't remember if I was gonna measure before or after I got to that stripe so I'm very very close you are very close but what you do and I don't have mine marked a lot of people mark theirs but since I'm mostly just knit socks mm -hmm. for me I don't have it marked but what you do is you take it and if you knit toe up you just put it in there and then you can measure as you can see mine is at I can't read it upside down. Almost seven and a quarter. I usually knit to seven and three quarters. So you might be able to get one more stripe in. So, yeah. I was thinking about knitting mine a little bit longer, but I don't know if I want to go to a full eight inch. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to decide. So, I think I might try it with this one and then, like, put in waist yarn. Mm -hmm. Do the heel, knit a little bit, try it on. And if I don't like it, I can rip to the waist yarn and then just redo the heel. So, mm -hmm. just because I've been noticing, like, mine just feel... They don't feel tight, but I have some sensory stuff, and sometimes the toe Rubs, bothers, bothers me. Him. So I was thinking maybe if I added just a little length, it wouldn't bother me as much. Oh, but then know? I'm worried about it being just a little bit too long and bothering me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> Why don't you go just a little bit past your seven and three fourths and so through? I can't even talk three fourths and not all the way to eight mm -hmm. to give you just a little like bit maybe more. Maybe just room. an extra row or two. Mm -hmm. So like. What I like about this, and because we're American and don't know, any, I don't know anything about centimeters, but what I might do is go to the 20 centimeters. Oh, you could. Because that's right between, right between and then them. that way it'd be an easy way for me to measure. I could try that out. That's a good idea. Because I'd be worried about, ooh, mine's stained. That's good. <laughs> Why would it be stained anyway? Um, and if you're interested, once you can do the link. It's the sock ruler from the www.sockruler.com. Mm -hmm. So, handy yeah. little gadget. So, I'm going to try that. We'll see how that goes. 
well, go 20 centimeters. I, like a regular old person. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. I had, I finished one of those, and I don't have it here close, so I'm not going to go get it. But I had cast on my other one, and Missy has been, this warm weather and this cold weather has been driving us, she's driving us crazy. She goes in and out, in and out, in mm -hmm. and out. So this morning I was knitting on it, and she started barking and carrying on, and I tried to get up, and my magic loop one side pulled out. So Aww. I just... Um, uh, you just ripped it out completely? I did, I did, and started all over. I've one of those days where if I... I think if I just messed up a stitch, I'd probably just throw the yarn yeah. away. Like, I'm just that cranky today. <laughs> <laughs> Took the notion that I was going to try to get some of my whips off. Mm -hmm. That's good. What Please I'm, show off that adorable bag. No, precious. That is from Fat Squirrel. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so I pulled out my Pure Joy, and I, at some point, all of my everything on my iPad, uh, somehow deleted my Adobe Reader off. And at that point, I had where I was at mm -hmm. wedge wise, and everything. Same. And there is text. Well, I kind of, anyway, I've picked it up to start it over, and we'll just, Allie's going to help, that's back so, so I think, Allie's going to help me look at the pattern before she leaves and get this started, but this Pretty. is all um, hedgehog fibers, it was from the kit that we had, the light is Zephyr, Zephyr and I don't remember where the dark is, and my tags aren't in here, so. I'll try and look back because I'm sure we've I'm talked about it. I'm sure we've talked it, about so. it before. But I thought that I was close enough in that my kids will go ahead and finish this one. And I'll go ahead and tell you when I did my Pure Joy, some mm -hmm. of my wedges had more rows than they needed just because you forget sometimes and I'd be like, oh well, no, yeah, I'm just going to just gonna keep going. Keep, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're just going to get me back on the right track and keep on going. If it's two or three extra rows, it'll just be two or three extra rows. What you got in that pretty bag? Um... And because I haven't been knitting much, I knit like two rows on this, so I'm going to count it. In my Lindsay Stitches bag it's that Mom bag. got me as a thank you for driving when we went to Fiber in the Burrow last year. Such pretty colors. I have um, a sock that I'm working on. I don't know if I ever showed it this because I forgot that I had a, a hoe. So I'm going to show it just in case I haven't. I don't think you have. This yarn is um, from Haverlin. It's the... Final Girls colorway, and I love it. So They're my Halloween-y socks. I like her. I especially love her ki her little um, Franken-Socks kits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my Halloween one. I'm going to do mine in for October. But I haven't done a bit of a toe. I picked it up because I went to a birthday party, not last weekend, but the weekend before. And I was like, well, I'm going to take knitting with me just in case I need it. I ended up actually not knitting. But, you know, I Such have an itty bitty two, and I fixed it so toe. they'll be, oh, um, maybe not completely matching, but close enough. Close. I've been working on my sweater. I always got to show the bag off because I love this bag. Mom came to the rescue because I couldn't find my interchangeable kit from Chowgu. I found it yesterday, by the way. Oh, good. It was on a bottom shelf, pushed up weird. Like, I, I was just at the right angle to even see it. Don't, I don't know, I don't know why I put it there, but anyway, um, she lent, lent me, well, she tried to lend me some <laughs> of those connectors so I could make, because I was going to do two needles, because I still wanted to be able to try it on, mm -hmm. and I thought it'd be easier to try on, but knitting with two needles was not going well, so I was like, well, if I need to try it on, I'll figure out something then. So she gave me a connector, well, she came over, but she didn't have the small connectors, and I needed the small ones, so she nicely ordered some and brought them over, so... Now I have it all on one needle. Well, yeah, one needle, two cords that have connected together. So it is joined because I think last time we podcasted, you, last time we podcasted, I was I was still in the gray. Mm -hmm, so that you guys get to see a lot. Gorgeous. Because mom and I were discussing on if I should go with purple or gray. So obviously I went with the purple. First we'll do the gray. The gray is Northbound Knitting Mosaic colorway. And then we have the purple, which is from a kit from Rock and String. And then I've started the striping. The white, well, it's not really, it looks white. But this lightest gray is the lightest gray from the gray gradient from Lydia. And this purple is another purple from Rock and String. 
So I'm doing four rows of each. And then the back isn't going to look the same because I didn't start on the back until I got to this purple. But I'm glad it had that little bit of a buffer between the gray and the white. The light gray that might as well be white because I don't think it would have been as nice of a transition. Right. So it's not going to look the same, but I think it'll look fine. Oh, it'll be fine. And I did, I can still put it on with these, with this. Oh, good. So, or at least I can right now. I don't know when we get past this area if I'll be able to. Yeah. <laughs> but before then, I can. And I put it on the other day, and it seems like it's going to fit just fine. Oh, wonderful. So, I'm really excited. It's a great pattern. It's Granito by Hohi Locatelli, which she writes amazing patterns anyway. So, I'm loving this. And like I said, I'm, I'm not really been knitting a whole lot. Just haven't felt up to it. But when I have been, I've been adding rows on this. And... It looks like a mess over here where I've been adding my stripes, but you guys know. It just always looks messy. I'm thinking okay, I'm, it's I'm awesome. thinking about like using um one of those bread ties or something to tie those little oh, strands on just so they're not in my way. Because I've seen a bunch of people do that. So I might try that if they continue to bother, bother me. But I mean, I'm not going to... That's a good idea. After I add a little bit more length, it's not going to bother me as much anyway. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that's all I've been knitting. Well, you've been doing good. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, um, all right. So, hats for kiddos. Hats for kiddos. We, um, because we had to move back a week for our recording, we will not be recording the first week of March. So, what we're gonna do is on. We'll wait till March second, and I'll go ahead and do random number, number generator, and I'll screenshot it and put it in the group for you guys, and we'll pick a, our February winner. Mm -hmm. To win, you just need to have put your a picture of your hat in the thread. You guys don't have to send me the hats yet. Uh, a couple of you have. Thank you very much. I'm already putting them up so they're ready. But you don't have to if you don't want to. If you want to wait till you have more hats, completely understand. If you want to go ahead and send them, that's fine. We're, I still have the P.O. box that I had last year. I'm just going to keep it for this year. So if you have that, just use that. If you don't have it anymore or you didn't have it before, just message me on Ravelry and I'll send it to you. So I'll just do a random number generator on March 2nd, so next Thursday. Yes, and you'll get, I'll gift you the pattern for February. Hats for kiddos. Uh, for March, we are actually, I'm going to start with a little bit of it, and Allison will finish out the green along part. But we are going to ask you guys to do uh, green hats mm -hmm. for March for St. Patty's Day. And you can either, we were requesting just for us, 75% about along their green in so your most, yard. mostly green. For mostly green. But there are some other knit-alongs going along that you guys can piggyback on. Yeah. So we're kind of, we hadn't really decided what we were going to do for March yet. And then Caffeinated Gert, uh, the Caffeinated Crafting Podcast, had, um, she's doing a green-along for March. And mm -hmm. she... Asked me, if, asked, asked me if we wanted to be part of it. And I was like, well, yeah, of course we want to be part of, the, a part of it. We love you. So that knit along, it, it's actually not just a knit along. It's a craft along. Cro so you yes. could, and you could knit, you could crochet, you could sew, you could weave, whatever. You could spin, whatever. It just has to be completely green. For us, like I said, it's just because for the hats, I understand if you don't want to do completely green, for it to count for us, the hat mm -hmm. needs to be at least 75% green, like mom said. But for Daniela specifically, if you wanted to double dip, mm -hmm. um, hers, she wants it completely green. So if you want to double dip, you'll have to do a completely green hat. Uh, but she did say that the Cats for Kiddos would count for her green along. Yes. And she's co-hosting that with, of course, us, because we're, we're jumping in with our Hats for Kiddos with it. But also Amanda from We Are Yarn and... Miss Fru from the Sassy Pants Center podcast. So we're all kind of doing it together. Just one little hat would enter you into her craft along. Yes. So knit along. I've got yarn for us and for her. Because I've, I've been trying to do two. Just mm -hmm. because I want to knit as many hats mm -hmm. as I can this year. So I got a mint green. It's very pretty. It's very pretty that uh, I'm going to do to where it'll count completely with Daniela's. Mm -hmm. But my favorite is actually the one... <laughs> I love this. And then she it's got greens this one. and turquoise and purple and yellow. It's so pretty. It's so and springy. And the green is definitely more of like a... 
in person. It's more of a uh, lime or something. Lime, yeah. So pretty. It almost looks turquoise all up there. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. It looks like, it makes me think of the Easter colors, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be fun. But that's what my upcoming plans are and to work on my pure joy. So what are your plans? Um, I need to do my February hat, which I still want to do what I had planned, which was that yellow hat with a red heart. And I haven't stashed stove yet for green. Mm -hmm. and I honestly, I don't suspect that I have green. Do you want to take half of this? No, it's fine. Um, and if I do have green, it might not meet the criteria necessarily. So I might, darn, I might have to go buy some more. Oh, don't. <laughs> I know, it's awful. Which actually, I have been wanting to make a nitpicks order anyway. Mm -hmm. So I might do that. Cool. Because I like their Bravo acrylic. So I might. I well, I have got plenty because I got a sack full when I went. You want to show off? All yeah, might as Mom well. went cray cray. Yes. With her hats for kiddos, John. Well, I went to Michael's and they had a, if you buy one, you got one mm -hmm. half. Yeah, she, I don't remember if I called you or you called me, but she was telling me about it. She got like these for like a steal. So. A steal, yeah. So here's another one. This one is, is this also gumdrops? Or mm -hmm. the Red Heart gumdrop? It actually feels really Doesn't soft. Doesn't it feel soft? I've never heard of this one before. So this one has blues, a green, yellow, and a really pretty peachy orange. And then this one has blues and browns and taupes. I'm super into taupe right now, so I kind of dig that. And then this one's probably not going to be a hat. This one this may one be a little for mom. socks. House, house socks for me. That just screams mom mm -hmm. all over. And it might be a cow. Who knows? Very nice. But this is it, also, this is the Red Heart Soft. Those others were the gumdrop. This is soft. Yeah. Which is... And this one, the... This, this one was soft, too. Oh, this one is soft, too. Nice. This one's 100% acrylic. What are there... Is there anything different with the gumdrop? No, it's 100% acrylic, too. They feel different. They do feel different, They both they? feel soft, though, but they feel different. But I'm rather excited about them. I'm going into the wool. I signed up to go yes, to Into the signed Wool. Up for Into the Wool. That's my birthday weekend, so I decided that. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, so yeah. I decided that yes, I would go this time. Good. Um, I wish you were going, but I understand you're going to sit out one more year, and that's okay. Y'all got other things. Y'all got a lot of stuff going on. We got some stuff up in the air. Some stuff up home. in the air at home. So, so. Um, they're going to have some stuff starts March the first. Um, oh, yeah, for their uh, their knit-alongs. For their knit-alongs. I always like the interview. And uh, one of them is going to be, um, one of the things it's going to be uh, hats for the preemie hats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dana and Jessica from the Just One More Row podcast are doing a preemie hat knit-along. Um, I can't remember what they called it. It has a cute little name, though. And then there's a glamping one. And it had several patterns that you could do. Um there were socks and hats and scarves and shawls and cowls and several things. And so I picked out, I'm going to do uh, caffeinated girts, the Tennessee twister cow. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That and one. some of the yarn that I got, uh, I haven't decided which color yet, but some of the yarn that I got at uh, End of the Wool two years ago. Mm-hmm. So. Well, fun. Fun. I'm a little, I'm excited. You should be. Yeah. It's a lovely retreat. And as far as I know, they still have some They openings. still have openings. If you're interested, it's, come and party with us. It's in Crossville, Tennessee. And it will be, I guess, the last weekend of September. Yes. Yes. Thursday. It's like the 21st or 22nd. And it, we, you check in on Thursday afternoon and you check out at noon on Sunday. My birthday's a Monday. So it's okay. the 24th. I think like 21st. Yeah. 21st through 24th. And I, I went the first few years, and it was super fun. I didn't get to go last year, this year. It's not going to work out either. Hopefully next year it'll work out. <laughs> yep. So, have you finished any books since uh, we last talked? Audible, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, two or three. I've been stuck on, um, I think it was because of the interest I've had in the Holocaust. I guess there was a, a day not too long ago or something, a Remembrance Day. Yes, there was. There was. So that's what... I think it was right, it was the beginning of the month, I want to say. So I, the first one I listened to is The Lilac Girls. I had that on my to read list. It was good. It was good. It was about, it was about three different young ladies 
one of them, and it's one of the young ladies. Even though it's a art, it's a work of fiction. One, the one lady that was from America was a legit person. So it's a historical fiction. Yes, and um, it was very interesting at the end where she talked about how she did all of her um, the research for the book. Okay, so does the author read the book on Audible? No. No, but she does talk about the she research. She does talk about okay. the research. So it's on a September day in Manhattan in 1931, 20-something Caroline Faraday is consumed by her efforts to secure the perfect boutonniere for an important French diplomat and resisting the rom uh, romantic adventures of a married actor. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, Kasia Kuzmarek, a Polish Catholic teenager is nervously anticipating the changes that are sure to come since Germany has declared war on Poland. As tensions rise abroad and in her personal life, Carolyn's interest in aiding the war effort in France grows and she eventually learns about the dire situation at the Ravensbrück all-female concentration camp. At the same time, Kasia's carefree youth is sli quickly slipping away, only to be replaced by a fervor for the Polish resistance movement. Through Ravensbrück and the horrific atrocities taking place there, told in part by an infamous German surgeon, Herta Obernhauser, the two women's lives will converge in unprecedented ways and a novel of redemption and hope emerges. It was, it was good. Um, it was sad in places, of course, because it was pretty, you know, went into detail. I don't know how much of it uh, was based on truth and how mm -hmm. much of it was based on fiction, but it was good. I finished listening to In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. It was narrated by Imogen Church. I talked about this, I think, last time. I think I just started it. It was good. I really liked it. I, I gave it three stars. I um, also listened, or I read her, I think her first, maybe this was her first book. I read her other book, The Woman in Cabin 10, last year, and it was okay. You know, it was okay. It was good, but it was just okay. And this one, I feel the same way. It was better than that one, but still, it's just okay. I liked the characters. I don't, like, I said that when I did my review for it, I said they were believable, but I've kind of thought more about it, and I think the only thing I really liked about the characters was that they all had negatives. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, this character's all completely negative, this character's all completely positive. Like, they all had flaws, and I really liked that. But then, like, they're really over the top at the same time. Not necessarily the flaw, it's just the people mm -hmm. in general. But, you know, it's interesting. But this one, we follow Nora who is going to a bachelorette party. It's a, at a cabin. There's uh, her, three other girls, and one, uh, a male friend that are, that, are, that are there. And, you know, it's just, it's weird. She hadn't seen the girl that's getting married mm -hmm. since, I think since she was like 16 or something. So it's been like 10 years, if I remember correctly. Some, you know, so we, we find out some truths and some history about them and kind of what happened and, there's murder involved, you know, of course. It was, but it was good. And I liked the reader. I thought she did a really good job. It does have the amnesia trope. And I'm not the biggest fan of that as a plot mm -hmm. device. But, you know, you get what you get. But yeah, it was good. I, like I said, I give it three stars. So it's not fantastic. But if you're into, like, thrillers, it's a good one for you. Okay. Well, my second one I finished was The Commandant's Girl. By Pam Janoff, and it was narrated by Rachel Botchen. And it was just, it was the same general story, so I'm not going to read the thing. It was about a, um, a young Jewish girl who was like six weeks after her wedding, her husband went off to fight in the resistance, the Poland resistance. Mm -hmm. And she was then taken to, uh, they called it the ghetto. That's where they housed mm -hmm. all the, the Jews. And she was taken out of that camp um, by the group that her husband was in during the middle of the night one night and placed with his aunt. Okay. And who was, um, was not a Jew. Mm -hmm. She was, um, but anyway, to save her life, she took a different identity. She actually worked for a commandant and it was, um, it was, it was just, it was good. It was sad. Um, 
It's a little racy at times, but it, it was good. And I don't know where I'm going next. I, I'm done with that. I've never <laughs> said enough doom, You're, gloom. And are, you, are you done with being sad for a little while? I am done with being sad for a while, so but I haven't decided what my next one's going to be. Well, I also finished reading, I read this on the Kindle. I talked about it last time because I know I complained about it. Um, I finished reading I Hate Everyone Except You by Clinton Kelly. Um, I finally, I had I had 25% of the book done and I was like, I just need to sit down and finish it. The last 75% of the book is really good and really interesting. My only negative with that book was that first story, which I talked about mm -hmm. last time, mm -hmm. where he talked about the body, where there was body shaming. And I still think it was because especially finishing it and seeing how his, how the the tone of each essay, because it's, it's a memoir that's broken up into, I think, 16 essays. Mm -hmm. Seeing that the tone of each essay went with each story and kind of like who he was at that time. I, I'm trying to get up, not, I don't want to say get over it, but I'm trying to not judge the entire book just based solely on that. Mm -hmm. Um, it was good if, if you like Clinton Kelly and you think he's an awesome person, it might be a good book to read. It will most likely change your opinion about him. <laughs> not just because of that book, just because there is, he's very snarky and I don't mean that negatively. Because I'm okay with some snark. But he is very snarky. There is discussions on... Um, there, it's not like graphic, but he does mention sex. And he does mention some drug use and things like that. So if you don't like reading things about that, I'd probably pass on it. But for the most part, it was really... It was... it was. I don't want to say it was good, but it wasn't bad. It was between bad and good. So it was eh. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I gave it three stars. It's very well written. And his essays, like, a lot of times with the memoirs when there are collections of essays, I feel like they're too long sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think his were good. They were to the point. They were, you know, some were longer than others, of course. But for the most part, I felt like it was just enough detail. And, you know, like I said, I I mean, I guess you could get it from the title, I Hate Everyone Except You, that it's going to mm -hmm. be kind of yeah, yeah. judgy or whatever. But it doesn't seem... I don't know. I feel like I'm making excuses for Clinton Kelly. Like he needs me to make excuses for him. But I don't know. It just, it was very quick after I decided that I was going to finish it. Because I've finished the last 75% in like a 24 hour period. Oh, that's good. So, I mean, I was intrigued and interested enough to continue reading once I got back into it. It's just, I don't think it'd be everyone's cup of tea. Probably even if you're, not. Even if you are a Clinton Kelly fan, I just don't think it'd be everyone's cup of tea. Probably not. So, and that's the only reason why I wanted to mention those few things that I didn't mention because, you know, I'm, whatever, you know, I can move along with it, but some people I know don't want to read stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I understand. Teach their own. So, what are you reading right now? I actually haven't been. I've just been listening to podcasts. I've listened oh, well, to... Well, I love uh, podcasts, so please. Well, Scott and I are trying to do Trim Healthy Mama, the Trim Healthy Mama plan, and um, we've not got started on it good by no means. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but they, they, it's by two sisters. If you're anywhere on Facebook, you've seen the T, uh, THM. I see it everywhere. Every, it's everywhere. It's by two sisters, Pearl Barrett and Serene Allison. But Pearl and Serene have just started doing a weekly podcast. So I've been listening to them. Mm -hmm. Um, I have been listening to, um, I, I got a flyer from Lifeway and there's a book. The pastor is preaches at Louisville, Kentucky, and I really like him. I like his writing style and the way he does his books, and he's got a podcast, so I've been listening to a sermon series of his this week, and it's been really good. It's been on grace. Um, he said it's very hard to teach because people, that's something you, people have to accept grace and give grace on their own. You can't teach somebody mm -hmm. to do it, but it's been a great eye-opener, and he's said some you know he's had some comments that I thought were really good that a lot of people that want grace but don't know how to give it uh, should listen to it so but that's where I'm at kind of right now and trying to decide what book I'm going to listen to next what about you I have been listening to Don't You Cry by Mary Kubeka this is her third book I have listened to the other two the first one was uh, The Good Girl, which I really, really liked. I also listened to Pretty Baby, which was okay. Not a, as good. This one is ridiculous. I have about two hours left, and that's the only reason I'm finishing it. I like I was listening to it on the way here. Um, I drove around for a little bit before I came over here. 
and uh, I listened to maybe about 30 minutes of it before I got here. And it's finally getting to the part where I feel like I'm finally going to get some answers. And I'm fine with that. Obviously, we're at the end or we're close to the end of the book. That's when we should be getting answers. But I feel like there's been, like, this, you know, usually with a book, there's, like, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. well, you hope for this. You accept maybe this with the progress. This has been the progress, I feel like. Like, I feel like it has been all leading up to something, but there hasn't been any, like... I don't know how to describe it. Like you, like you want like little wins, maybe I guess throughout mm-hmm. to make it make you want to finish. And I feel like there hasn't been those little blips or whatever. It's just been it's like overly descriptive Ew. and like I feel like so much can be edited. Like I was over here, I uh, I listen. I'm listening to this, but like I've been like doing that speech to text into my phone in a notes thing because because I do my book reviews, I keep a a note thing on each of my books if I have like a part that I want to discuss and that way I, that idea. way I don't forget about it. I usually never look at my notes. I don't know why I do this. I usually still forget to talk about it. But this one I have so many notes about it and they're all complaining. <laughs> I am so sick. Okay, the main character or one of the characters and I'll I'll give you guys a backstory in a minute. I'll give you guys a backstory in a minute, but I want to complain first because this book is frustrating me so much. She has ombre hair, and they mention it so many times. If I never hear the word ombre again, I will be fine. I have met my quota. I've met it. It's ridiculous. And, like, on the way over here, she was talking about, she, um, it's told from two perspectives, and that's how she did her other books. Mm. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. And the way this one is narrated, there's, um, a female narrator for the female Quinn and a male narrator for the male Alex. You know, it's great. I don't like either of the narrators. I think they both are awful. Um, and the voices that they are doing are awful. So bad. It's <laughs> so bad. So bad. Anyway. But, like, she was talking to this cop, and she and he, she was talking about his the fact that he's balding. And she goes, I think that's called male pattern baldness. And then she was talking about how he was having to hold the paper close to his eyes. And I can't think of what the term is, but she was like... Oh, that's this. And I see commercials about this. And I'm like, why do we need oh that? Goodness. Why are you adding so much stuff in this book? Is it because you had a quota of words and you needed those words? Were you doing National Novel Writing Month and you needed those 50,000 words? What is up? I feel like it is way, 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 way too descriptive. And like I said, I'm I'm under two hours away now. And I just want to find out the dealio now. And... I don't feel like, no matter what, finding out what it is, I don't think this is going to save this book for me. Probably not. I'm just going to be honest. All right, now that I've complained, (laughs) I'll tell you what it's about. In downtown Chicago, a young woman named Esther Vaughn disappears from her apartment without a trace. A haunting letter addressed to my dearest is found among her possessions, leaving her friend and roommate Quinn Collins to wonder where Esther is and whether or not she is the person Quinn thought she knew. Meanwhile, in a small Michigan Harbor town an hour outside Chicago, a mysterious woman appears in the quiet coffee shop where 18-year-old Alex Gallo works as a dishwasher. He is immediately drawn to her charm and beauty, but what starts as an innocent crush crush quickly spirals into something far more dark and sinister than he, than he ever expected. As Quinn searches for answers about Esther and Alex is drawn under further under Pearl's spell, Master of Suspense... Mary Kubeka takes readers on a taut and twisted thrill ride that builds us to a stunning conclusion. It better be. <laughs> and shows that no matter how fast and far we run, the past always catches up with us in the end. This book, like the, the Goodreads ratings, it's 3.59. I mean, that's what most books are rated. So, I mean, people mm-hmm. like this book, but I don't get it. And I'm also reading The Roanoke Girls by Amy Ingell. This is an advanced reader copy that I won from a Goodreads giveaway. So enter those giveaways. I have one too. And this one, and the other one we won't talk about because it was really bad. This one, I'm liking it. I'm about, I'm... You're pretty good wife. I'm 107 pages in. I'm liking it. I have some stuff that I feel like is spoiler. But I feel like if someone was going to read this book, I feel like they should know. Mm-hmm. So first, I'm gonna read the back, and then I'm going to do my the little spoiler thing, be- just because I think that's important. 
Um, after her mother's suicide, Lane Renoke come came to live with her grandparents and cousin Allegra on their farm in rural Kansas. Lane knew little of her mysterious family, but she quickly embraced life as one of the privileged Roanoke girls. When she discovered the dark truth at the heart of the family, she ran, fast and far away. Years later, Lane is adrift in L.A. when her grandfather calls to tell her Allegra has gone missing. Did she run to? Or something worse. And able to resist, Lane returns to help search and to ease her guilt at having left Allegra behind. Her homecoming may mean a second chance with the boyfriend whose heart she broke that long ago summer. But it also means facing the secret that made her flee one she may not be strong enough to run from again. As it weaves between Lane's first Roanoke summer and her return, the Roanoke girl sh shocks and tantalizes, twisting its way through revelation after mesmerizing revelation, exploring the secrets families keep and the fierce and terrible love that both binds them together and rips them apart. Well, it sounds good. It's not bad. Okay. <laughs> it's not bad. And if you're interested in reading this, it comes out next month. It's supposed to come out March 7th. So it oh, comes out in a same. couple weeks. So if you're interested, I haven't, like I said, I haven't finished it yet. I am liking it. And this is where the spoiler comes in. So if you do not want a possible spoiler, I will say it's a spoiler, but you get it like really quick. Or at least I did. And I don't know if like I was being being really weird about it and or if I like read something that might have spoiled mm -hmm. it for me but I feel like it's just it's very there and even though they don't flat out say it until about a hundred pages in or a little bit less than that but I mean I feel like it's there so I'm gonna keep this up while I mention it if you um don't want to hear the possible spoiler just I guess mute us until this book goes down <laughs> that's a good idea so <laughs> that's what we'll do there is incest in this book. The grandfather. And it's it's a lot. There's no... It's not descriptive. But it's there. And I feel like that's an important thing to know before going into this book. Yes, because if you... Do not want to read such things, yes. you might not want to read it. Because I exactly. probably would not want to. Exactly. And that's why I feel like it's important to know before going into this book it's like I said it's not descriptive it's not like sexually explicit or anything like that it does allude to it and it does mention it and like I said I'm 100 pages in and like they've kind of talked about it but not really mm -hmm. but I mean you get a weird feeling from the grandfather that's my disclaimer just because I feel like that's important and it makes me it makes it hard for me to call it a good book discuss right. with that in it but at the same time I know a book can still be good when it has those things. I mean, we talk about books all the time that have murders in them. And so mm -hmm. They're good. So, I mean, just because it has a negative thing and it doesn't necessarily make it a bad book, it can make you uncomfortable. And if you have... You guys know what I'm trying to say. So, so that's my little spoiler warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's written very well. This is her first adult book uh amy engel she has a young adult series called the book of ivy and she's a former criminal def defense attorney which i find interesting that for some interesting. reason i don't know why i find that interesting but i do hmm. so i will have that finished and we'll talk more about it the next time, the next time. and we'll just try and do that in the future if we ever want to mention something that we feel like could be a spoiler we'll just Kind of do that. I saw that I on a... I think that's a good well, idea. I'm not going to pretend like I made it up or anything. Like, I watch BookTube a lot, which is basically like knitting podcasts, but they talk about books, and I've watched some before. Well, the, they do that. Well, they'll hold the book up while they talk about anything that could be a spoiler. Mm -hmm. That way, if you were, were reading it or were about to and you didn't want to know anything, you could just... Mute it. Mute it or skip ahead or mm -hmm. something. So... But yeah, like I said, I feel like that was a good... That's a thing... If you're interested that you should know about that book. Yes. But yeah. So what's on your stand? I really don't have anything other than reading my Trim Healthy Mama Plan. That's what I'm reading. That's what you're that's reading. All, okay. Yeah, that's, that's all you got. And finishing that other one. Okay. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, yes. Don't forget, you know, get your February Hats for Kiddos hats posted so you can possibly win a pattern. So when I lock it, I will... Do the random number generator. I'll screenshot it, post it in the thread that so you guys can see one. I'll tag you one. 
Um, the March theme again is for hats for kiddos is just green. Mm -hmm. Any pattern you want, just the hat has to be green, and you can double dip into the green, green cow, the craft along with caffeinated crafting. Yes. Yes. And thank you all so much for the hats that you are knitting yes. and the ones you're going to be knitting. They're actually fun. Scott said, you really like doing those little hats, don't you? Well, they're quick. They're quick. And sometimes you need that quick, like mm -hmm. instant gratification mm -hmm. almost. So, yeah. Well, I'm Allie. I'm Vicki. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys again, hopefully. In two weeks. In two weeks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.